Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. My name is Silent Mike, your host, hostess with the mostess, also known as Mike Farr. Gonna have a little bit of deadlift footage today, talk a little bit about competing in the sport of powerlifting and how it differs from other sports, plus maybe having an exit strategy, when to call it, when to push it, and things of that nature. Before we hop into the video, ladies and gentlemen, please give this thing a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. We're dropping new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. First thing in the morning. Look at that tushy. Those poor shorts just getting eat up like a Christmas turkey buffet. I guess you eat prime rib on Christmas, but some people might eat turkey. I guess you don't really go to a buffet on Christmas, but it's the first thing that came to my mind. A tweet came out from my boy Johnny Candido probably a couple months ago, but it's something that's been on my mind a lot recently. I did a, another video that's coming out soon talking about why I compete or why I don't compete. Uh, I also made a post on Instagram, Silent Mike with 2Ks, talking about why I don't compete or why I don't love to compete. Um, and basically Johnny said in the tweet that powerlifting is unlike other sports. One, because you don't get paid and no one cares what you do. Two, there is no exit forced upon you. When you played basketball, soccer, baseball, volleyball, golf, whatever it might be as a kid, uh, at some point at the top of the game, whether for some people it's eighth grade, some people it's junior varsity, some people it's varsity, some people it's college or the professional level. At some point, it's somebody else telling you, you're not good enough. Your career has now ended. You're not picked for this team. You didn't make the cut in this tournament. You didn't make this national, local, county, block, cul-de-sac squad. Uh, and so now you will no longer play the sport. Where in powerlifting, um, that never ends. Uh, if you pay your $100 to be part of whatever federation and you pay your $150 to enter in a meet, you can compete however, whenever you want. Um, and that's all good and dandy. That's that's the beauty of powerlifting. It's the beauty and the curse of powerlifting that you can compete forever, technically. Um, but our bodies and our minds, if you're a competitive person, uh, that may not be the healthiest thing. Now, powerlifting is healthy. Uh, before you guys start bashing me, my game, you saying powerlifting is going to help everybody, and it does. But if you start to take it too serious and at a competitive, highly competitive level, um, your body can break down and will break down. You know, I've been uh, squat, bench, and deadlift with the pure goal of adding pounds to the bar for about 10 years, uh, and my body's hurting. Uh, my body's hurting, as many of you guys out there that compete or train real seriously. Um, can also relate to. So um, the exit strategy for me is difficult because I am competitive, even though I don't love to compete. The competition in my mind is, is what I did last week, what I did last month, when I did uh, five years ago. I always want to be stronger. I always want to look a little bit better. I always want to lift more weight in the gym reps or, or, or one rep max, but I have to be able to disconnect my mind from that. Um, one, if I want to lift, live my best life, Hashtag Fitzbo. Um, but that's the truth. You know, I want to feel good. Uh, and I think there's a, there, there's a certain amount of dose of squat bench dead heavy, still getting strong, maybe with some variation uh, that is there. And for the last year or so, uh, rehabbing my back and dealing with those issues, dropping the weight, getting back down to 198 pounds, which I hit this morning. Bing, 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 bing. Cheers in the chat. Cheers in the comments below. First time below 200 pounds in a couple years. Um, I've reached those goals and, and my other goal was step back on the platform and hit some of the best numbers I've ever hit. But I got a little bit consumed with that. And that's kind of what my Instagram post was. Having an exit strategy in my head was I'm going to show out one or two last meets uh, and then and then grab uh, Princess Peach and ride off into the sunset on my barebacked horse like the stallion. Um, but I need to I need to stop being so extreme in my mind where, yes, I do think my body needs a break from squat bench dead. I'll probably move into more unilateral stuff, maybe trap bar, maybe even machines. I'm already belt squatting, but maybe some leg press, some hack squats, some things I have a little bit more fun with, get my heartbeat up, uh, get a workout in 45 minutes. Nice, nice little pump in the quads. Um, I want to do sprints again. I want to do some cycling again. Uh, I want to try a little bit of a variety um, physically and mentally. But I guess what I'm saying is I don't have to just shut it off. Um, I do think it's good to have a general idea to switch gears here and there or, or know when you're going to push or not. Um, I am getting older, by no means old. And I know powerlifting age, you know, mid 30s, late 30s, even 40s into your 50s. If you stay healthy, you could probably be your strongest. But being my strongest isn't necessarily my overall goal of my life being my best is and that means making myself happy and helping those around me uh, to be healthier or be happier um, so for me 
not saying I'm, I'm, I'm putting up the squat shoes. I'm not hanging up the squat shoes and hanging up the uh, Inzer belt. But what I'm saying is that I, I will switch gears and I need to chill out in my mind that any potential could happen. I could, I could go right back and compete every six months like I used to. I could go right back and compete every five years or I could never compete again. Uh, and, and, and it's all up to me and the choice is fine any way I go. Um, you know, I wish I could blame it on social media and I wish I could blame it on you guys, but it's not you guys. I, I don't have that much social pressure to compete or lift, uh, to be honest. Uh, I, I have social pressure uh, and pressure from you guys to, to put out good content, um, to, to, to be interactive and to put out consistent content. But the, the competing pressure is just uh, 100% internal for me. I have uh, a past of competing. I have a past of uh, being a little bit obsessed. I have a past of uh, being a little bit addicted to sport and victory and winning. All I do is wean, 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 Mr. DJ Khaled said. Um, so all that pressure I know is coming from the inside of me. And that's why I have these constant conversations in my head. Uh, and now, obviously, because of this voiceover, you guys get a look into my head, my insane head that's running around back and forth, back and forth. But um, that's just a tweet that, that, that really, you know, sparked a lot of thought in me because uh, I know those are true and I know that to be true that you can't compete in powerlifting forever. I mean, I guess you can, but you can't be at a high level and you can't continue to push yourself forever that you have to make your exit strategy. And that's a little bit with everything you do in life. Uh, you know, it's, it sucks and, and it's kind of dumb to say, but relationships come and go, friendships come and go, jobs come and go, activities and hobbies come and go. And it's okay to let them come. It's okay to let them go. And it's okay if they never come back, but it's also okay if they do come back again. Um, if you guys see tugging a little bit heavy today, this was uh, just before the RV trip. Be sure to check back on those vlogs. I think you guys will really enjoy them. A lot of fun with the Barber Brigade homies, Bart and Gio. Uh, so I, I worked up to about 635, which moved a lot slower than I'd like. Um, but we'll, we'll figure that out. We're still tweaking things. Uh, took a little bit of break after that because of the trip and travel and work. Uh, but, but everything's grooving okay. You know, I'm trying not to put too much pressure on just one lift at one competition. I'm just going to go and try to have a good time. Have some fun with the homies. If I pull mid sixes, we'll call it a win because that's the best I've ever done at 198 technically. So it is what it is. If we do more, we do more and we show out on the internets. Get all the likes and ride off into the sunset again with princess peach and my italian stallion barebacked um i do appreciate you guys for listening to me ramble uh it, it helps to get my thoughts out there i don't journal i don't like to read uh and in a way this youtube channel both in the gym and out now with all the vlogs is my way to journal to you guys it's my way to vent it's my way to spread my thoughts uh as well as a podcast let's plug away while we're there mama's boys podcast every tuesday and friday if you guys are into some comedy uh, into hop topics or just random conversation me and omar isa start a podcast uh, and also, I've been twitching my face off. Silent M1 KKE. It's in the description below. I've been on Twitch multiple times a week for long streams. We're talking five to nine hour streams, hanging with you guys. And the feedback has absolutely been awesome. So uh, hit 635 for a nice little single. Uh, not the best. Then I think I hit this 545 for a couple triples. Uh, Yvonne is messing up in the background. Shout out to Evan for being my boy, uh, even though his warrior is about to lose. I appreciate him. Uh, <clears throat> taking all my jokes this whole trip and also helping me film this thing. But so then I hit 545, I think for two or three triples. And then I think I dropped it down 495 for a set of five. Uh, I just want to get my normal amount of volume, uh, which on this day is a heavy-ish single uh, with some drop sets of three to five. Um, but I got this extra 545 in because I knew I was going to take time off. Oh, that's 635. Buddy, a little slow. I guess looking back on it, it was a little faster than I thought. Um, that is 635, right? Yeah. But in my head, it was so slow. Uh, I don't know why, but now looking back a week later, that's see, that's how my mind plays, dude. My my mind's playing tricks on me. I believe that's a hip hop song. Google it. Um, for some reason, it felt like it was a max, but uh, looking back here is decent. So then we dropped to the five forty five triples. My other day um, is kind of a technique day, or maybe some of you guys might call it a typical speed day, except it's heavier. I do use submaximal loads, but I'm using anywhere from 475 to maybe even 585 towards the end of this thing uh, for a bunch of singles, doubles, and triples. Uh, and my goal for there is really just greasing the groove, getting used to the singles, doubles, the lower rep range, and just banging them out. Where this day uh, is my more strength day, I'm getting something heavy in my hands. 
and then I'm uh, getting the volume to back it up. So uh, getting that fatigue a little bit higher and then we'll slowly let it dissipate moving into the meat and hopefully the loads will go up. Uh, overall, it feels really good. The competition I believe is in July at Barber Brigade. I think it's open to the public. There may be a door fee, uh, but feel free to come out and kick it. If you want to say what's up, say what's up, but probably do it after I pull because I'll probably have headphones on and be in the zone a little bit. Uh, again, I appreciate you all, all you guys for listening to me ramble. I appreciate you uh, for the support here here uh mama's boys podcast support and feedback has been insane my instagram and now my twitch uh we had a, a really fun uh, stream last night so that thing's slowly growing and we're having a good time onward and upward my friends here's the 500 for five <clears throat> form feels locked in back feels decent considering um having my underhand on my right side which is my more painful side has been helping uh, the side I tweak more often because I have a little bit less of that helicopter action. I can stay a little bit uh, more even. Uh, Nadim is really impressed by this 495, as you guys can see. Uh, he's a big sumo polar fan. He doesn't even mind uh, that it may be cheating. That's amazing. I just saw this footage for the first time. What a dickhead. Appreciate you guys. New video coming out. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Salam Mike. I'm out.